Vaikom Muhammad Bashir the 19th of January 1908 to the 5th of July 1994 was a Malayalam fiction writer from the state of Kerala in India. He was a humanist, freedom fighter, novelist and short story writer. He was noted for his path-breaking, disarmingly down-to-earth style of writing that made him equally popular among literary critics as well as the common man. He was regarded as one of the most successful and outstanding writers from India. Translations of his works into other languages have won him worldwide acclaim. His notable works include Balyakalasaki, Shabdangal, Pathumayud Aadu, Matilakal, N. Tupupakoranandarnu, Janmadinam and Anurga Nimisham. He was awarded the Padma Shri in 1982. He was fondly remembered as the Baipur Sultan. Biography Early life Bashir, born in Thalayolaparambu near Vaikom Khatiyam district, was the eldest child of his parents. His father was in the timber business. After beginning his education at the local Malayalam medium school, he was sent to the English medium school in Vaikom, five miles away. While at school he became a follower of Mahatma Gandhi. He started wearing kadar, inspired by the Swadeshi ideals. When Gandhi came to Vaikom to participate in the Vaikom Satyagraham 1924, Bashir went to see him. He managed to climb onto the car in which Gandhi travelled and touch his hand, a fond memory Bashir later mentioned in many of his writings. He used to visit Gandhi's Satyagraha ashram at Vaikom every day. <laughs> <laughs> Freedom struggle involvement He resolved to join the fight for an Indian independence, leaving school to do so while he was in the fifth form. Bashir was known for his perfectly secular attitude, and he treated all religions with respect. Since there was no active independence movement in Kochi, being a princely state, he went to Malabar district to take part in the Salt Satyagraha in 1930. His group was arrested before they could participate in the Satyagraha. Bashir was sentenced to three months imprisonment and sent to Kanner prison. He became inspired by stories of heroism by revolutionaries like Bhagat Singh, Sukhdev Thapar and Shivram Rajguru, who were executed while he was in Kannur. He and about 600 political prisoners then at Kannur were released after the gandhi Irwin Pact of March 1931. Freed from prison, he organized an anti-British movement and edited a revolutionary journal, Ujavanam. A warrant was issued for his arrest and he left Kerala. Topic. Journey Having left Kerala, he embarked upon a long journey that took him across the length and breadth of India and to many places in Asia and Africa for seven years, doing whatever work that seemed likely to keep him from starvation. His occupations ranged from that of a loom fitter, fortune teller, cook, newspaper seller, fruit seller, sports goods agent, accountant, watchman, shepherd, hotel manager to living as an ascetic with Hindu saints and Sufi mystics in their hermitages in Himalayas and in the Ganges Basin, following their customs and practices, for more than five years. There were times when, with no water to drink, without any food to eat, he came face to face with death. After doing menial jobs in cities such as Ajmer, Peshawar, Kashmir and Calcutta, Bashir returned to Ernakulam in the mid-1930s. While trying his hands at various jobs, like washing vessels in hotels, he met a manufacturer of sports goods from Sialkot who offered him an agency in Kerala. And Bashir returned home to find his father's business bankrupt and the family impoverished. He started working as an agent for the Sialkot Sports Company at Ernakulam but he lost the agency when a bicycle accident incapacitated him temporarily. On recovering, he resumed his endless hunt for jobs. He walked into the office of a newspaper Jayakesari whose editor was also its sole employee. He did not have a position to offer, but offered to pay money if Bashir wrote a story for the paper. Thus Bashir found himself writing stories for Jayakesari and it was in this paper that his first story, Ente Thankam, My Darling, was published in the year 1937. A path-breaker in Malayalam romantic fiction, it had its heroine a dark-complexioned hunchback. His early stories were published between 1937 and 1941 in Navajivan, a weekly published in Trivandrum in those days. <laughs> Topic. 
Imprisonment and after At Cottium he was arrested and put in a police station lockup, and later shifted to another lockup in Kolam Kasbah police station. The stories he heard from policemen and prisoners there appeared in later works, and he wrote a few stories while at the lockup itself. He spent a long time in lockup awaiting trial, and after trial was sentenced to two years and six months imprisonment. He was sent to Tiruvananthapuram Central Jail. While at jail, he forbade M. P. Paul from publishing Balyakalasaki. He wrote Premalekanam while serving his term and published it on his release. Balyakalasaki was published in 1944 after further revisions, with an introduction by Paul. He then made a career as a writer, initially publishing the works himself and carrying them to homes to sell them. He ran two bookstalls in Ernakulam, Circle Book House and later, Bashir's Bookstall. Once India achieved control after obtaining independence from British rule, he showed no further interest in active politics, though concerns over morality and political integrity are present all over his works. Well into his forties, he surprised many of his acquaintances by marrying a woman much younger than him Fabi Bashir, and settling down to a life of quiet domesticity with his wife and two children, Anis and Shahina, in Baipur, on the southern edge of Khori Khod. During this period he also suffered from mental illness and was twice admitted to mental sanatoriums. He wrote one of his most famous works, Pathumayud Aadu Pathuma's Goat, while undergoing treatment in a mental hospital in Thrissur. The second spell of paranoia occurred after his marriage when he had settled down at Baipur. He recovered both times, and continued his writings. He died in Baipur, on 5 July 1994. Bashir is fondly referred to as the Baipur Sultan. Though his works have been translated to English and 18 Indian languages, the peculiarity of the language he uses makes the translations lose a lot of sheen. Writing style Language Bashir is known for his unconventional style of language. He did not differentiate between literary language and the language spoken by the commons and did not care about the grammatical correctness of his sentences. Initially, even his publishers were unappreciative of the beauty of this language, they edited out or modified conversations. Bashir was outraged to find his original writings transcribed into standardized Malayalam, devoid of freshness and natural flow, and he forced them to publish the original one instead of the edited one. Bashir's brother Abdul Kader was a Malayalam teacher. Once while reading one of the stories, he asked Bashir, where are Akiyas and Akyathas, elements of Malayalam grammar, in this? Bashir shouted at him saying that, I am writing in normal Malayalam, how people speak, and you don't try to find your stupid Akya and Akyata in this. This points out to the writing style of Bashir, without taking care of any grammar, but only in his own village language. Though he made funny remarks regarding his lack of knowledge in Malayalam, he had a very thorough knowledge of it. Bashir's contempt for grammatical correctness is exemplified by his statement Ninte Lodaku's Akyadam, your silly stupid grammar, to his brother, who sermonizes him about the importance of grammar, Pathumayud Aadu. Themes An astute observer of human character, he skillfully combined humor and pathos in his works. Love, hunger and poverty, life in prison are recurring themes in his works. There is enormous variety in them, of narrative style, of presentation, of philosophical content, of social comment and commitment. His association with India's independence struggle, the experiences during his long travels and the conditions that existed in Kerala, particularly in the neighbourhood of his home and among the Muslim community, all had a major impact on them. Politics and prison, homosexuality, all were grist to his mill. All of Bashir's love stories have found their way into the hearts of readers, perhaps no other writer has had such an influence on the way Malayali's view of love. The major theme of all Bashir stories is love and humanity. In the story Muchidthukalikarante Makal, the card sharp's daughter, when Sainaba comes out of the water after stealing his bananas, Mandan Muthapa says only one thing, Sainaba go home and dry your hair else you may fall sick. 
This fine thread of humanism can be experienced in almost all his stories. About the influence of Western literature in his works, Bashir once wrote, I can readily say that I have not been influenced by any literature, Western or Eastern, for, when I started writing I had no idea of literature. Even now it is not much different. It is only after I had written quite a bit, that I had opportunities to contact Western literature. I read all that I could get hold of. Somerset Maugham, Steinbeck, Maupassant, Flaubert, Romain Rolland, Gorky, Chekhov, Hemingway, Pearl S. Buck, Shakespeare, Galsworthy, Shaw. In fact, I organized one or two bookstalls so that I could get more books to read. But I read these books mainly to know their craft. I myself had plenty of experience to write about. I have even now. I am unable to ascertain who has influenced me. Perhaps Romain Rolland and Steinbeck. But even they, not much. Autobiographical element One contrast among his works is between those that are primarily autobiographical as far as events and characters are concerned and those that are the product of the author's imagination. This is not to say that a novel or a story will always fall clearly into one category or another, the percentage of factual truth varies considerably. Whatever the case, a book published as fiction is to be read as such, in contrast with one published as memoirs. Works Almost all of Bashir's writing can be seen as falling under the heading of prose fiction, short stories and novels, though there is also a one-act play and volumes of essays and reminiscences. Bashir's fiction is very varied and full of contrasts. There are poignant situations as well as merrier ones, and commonly both in the same narrative. There are among his output realistic stories and tales of the supernatural. There are purely narrative pieces and others which have the quality of poems in prose. In all, a superficially simple style conceals a great subtlety of expression. His literary career started off with the novel Premalekanam, a humorous love story between Keshavan Nair, a young bank employee, an upper caste Hindu Nair and Sarama, an unemployed Christian woman. Hidden underneath the hilarious dialogues we can see a sharp criticism of religious conservatism, dowry and similar conventions existing in society. This was followed by the novel Balyakalasaki, a tragic love story between Majid and Sura, which is among the most important novels in Malayalam literature in spite of its relatively small size 75 pages, and is commonly agreed upon as his magnum opus work. In his foreword to Balyakalasaki, Jivathathal Ninam Oru Aedu A Page from Life, M. P. Paul brings out the beauty of this novel, and how it is different from run-of-the-mill love stories. The autobiographical Janmadinam Birthday, 1945, is about a writer struggling to feed himself on his birthday. While many of the stories present situations to which the average reader can easily relate, the darker, seamier side of human existence also finds a major place, as in the novel Shabdangle, Voices, 1947, which faced heavy criticism for violence and vulgarity. N. Tupupakoranandarnu, My Granddad, Add an Elephant. 1951, is a fierce attack on the superstitious practices that existed among Muslims. Its protagonist is Kunjupathama, a naive, innocent and illiterate village belle. She falls in love with an educated, progressive, city-bred man, Nisar Ahmed. Illiteracy is fertile soil for superstitions, and the novel is about education enlightening people and making them shed age-old conventions. Valishathanentoru Valisham a crude translation can be, brightness is very bright, one of the most quoted Bashir phrases occurs in N. Tupapakoranandarnu. People boast of the glory of days past, their grandfather's elephants, but that is just a ploy to hide their shortcomings. Matilakal Walls deals with prison life in the pre-independence days. It is a novel of sad irony set against a turbulent political backdrop. The novelist falls in love with a woman sentenced for life who is separated from him by insurmountable walls. They exchange love promises standing on two sides of a wall, only to be separated without even being able to say goodbye. Before he met Narayani, the loneliness and restrictions of prison life was killing Bashir, but when the orders for his release arrive he loudly protests. Who needs freedom? Outside is an even bigger jail. The novel was later made into a film with same name by Adore Gopalakrishnan with Mahmoodi playing Bashir. 
Stalith Pradhana Divyan, Anivarium Pankarasham, Muchithukalikarante Makal, and Etakali Mamunju featured the life of real life characters in his native village of Thalayolaparambu, regarded as Stalam in these works. New application on Bashir named Bashir Malayalathinte Sultan is now available as an iPad application which includes ebooks of all the works of the author, animation of his prominent works like Pathumayude Aadu, Anapuda, audio book, special dictionaries encloses words used by Bashir, sketches of characters made by renowned artists and rare photos among others. Published works Topic Novels Topic Short Stories Topic Others Topic Awards Sahitya Akademi in 1970 Central Sahitya Akademi and Padma Shri in 1982 Doctor of Letters by University of Calicut conferred on 19 January 1987. Kerala State Film Award for Best Story, Matilakal Lalithambika Antharyanam Award Mudathu Varki Award Valathal Award 1993